is on the main stream. If you guys aren't watching both streams simultaneously, you are missing out on half of the content from this weekend. That is true. But as you were saying, Slut, this set, exciting. Tell me about it. This is Kuro, man. This is... Uh, wait, wait, the tags are switched. Kuro is the ZSS. Uh, Kuro is the ZSS from Japan. He's number 40 in Japan. He recently, not super recently, but won Umabura SP6 double eliminating Kamehameha. I've never heard of this guy until I saw him in this pool. So I was like, what the heck? How, does, how, how have I never heard about this guy before? Uh, he also has a pit, apparently. Okay, okay. I don't know if he plays it very often, but he does. Uh, this is Dragon Eel on the other side. I don't really know who he is. Oh, okay. Sorry. I, I, let, I, let, I let you down on that one. <laughs> uh, I mean, Dragon Eel made an upset, though. That's all I know. Uh, and Dragon Eel is definitely doing good against Kuro as well. Yep. Already starting off with a strong opening hand. We'll see how they, they draw further from here, but uh, Dragon Eel. Caught in the corner, still managing to get to just slip out of it. I think the big thing that so far Kuro's been leaning on is specifically that Zare to kind of keep poking at Palutena, but out of range of like her Nair and stuff, so you don't have to right. uh, dance with her directly. And that, that tool is so useful for Zio Suit and a bunch of other matchups too, like Game & Watch, for example, where you try and outranging his up yet a shield is such a huge deal. Right there, ready to swoop in after the Paralyzer, just sneaking that out after a, a sea of just pokes. Yeah, CSS reminds me of like a like almost like a Wario S character in the way that she pokes you and then she does stuff that's like right on top of you and you know you, she gets one hit and then she combos you for a really long time, does a bunch of percent, mm -hmm. and then she puts you in a situation where you have to tech and choose an option and the option coverage from CSS is so so good with the down smash. Oh, speaking of it, there's gonna be another down smash. In the Ow. Boost kick. This character just has so many great options to cover any get ups, any uh, you know jumps from ledge, that kind of thing. It just covers so much. And the thing that makes it, it's kind of similar to that Yoshi effect you were talking about earlier, where like down smash has so little end lag on it that you can do it to try to catch a neutral get up, but then you're not in like severe disadvantage if you miss it, right? Because like you're able to move immediately afterwards. But so far, Kuro like. He had a little bit of a startup time against Dragneel, but now that he's like got himself some blood, then he's just happy to go. Good chase on the teleport. Doesn't get a, a punish on it, but I guess to at least keep up positional pressure. Yeah, exactly. Flip kick already expended. Ooh, that's it. Yep. I, re I respect that down air. It's like, I'm dead anyway. Yeah, the drift back was like in fear of a back air or something like that. It's mm. just a little bit too heavy. Great tech from Dragneel. Yep. Not able to get anything off of it afterwards, though. I mean, the fact that he was aware of it and then just like disengaged afterwards is actually yeah. even more impressive. He didn't just panic. Yeah, knowing, uh, like we said earlier, like knowing when it's your turn to talk, really, really important. And not necessarily your turn to talk there. You might as well just not chance it. Ooh, first hit fair into, into bear? <laughs> nice. <laughs> I, I'm. I'm liking Kuro so far. This can... Joker? What is <laughs> Why do so many characters do that? <laughs> multi... Falcon does that. Like multi-hit moves in this game are super fun for that reason. Yeah, like, like I, I think that's something that's kind of unique to um, to platform fighters that fighting games aren't really able to tap into is the the, the concept of like I'm gonna do like this multi-hit move but fast fall it. Yeah. And like the fact that you can choose when you fast fall in the middle of your attack animation that causes your attack to do different things entirely and opens up your combo tree. It's really cool. But we're going to get ourselves Pichu. Yeah, this matchup a lot, lot easier for Pichu than it is for Palu, I think. I, I assume uh, the attempt here is I'm going to play a really small hitbox character because traditionally Zero Suit gets really frustrated with that. Right. Um, but this like, isn't a traditional Zero Suit we're talking about here. It's, that's true, yeah. This is, a, this is a guy who beats Kamehameha. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that back hair just so nicely put. He's very, very precise. Like that, yeah. that, so far, we have not seen like Kuro throw out a move that is imprecise in any way whatsoever. It's kind of precise. Cause, That's cause, basic. Because the thing that made it like cause he's like almost reacting, but he also was like doing an empty jump to begin with, so that then put him in the airspace where he needed to be in order to react with just the right things. Like these are like preemptive stuff that he's putting into place with his positions. It's, it's sick. It's all about the uh, positional awareness, right? Yeah. If you can put yourself in a position where you can react to that kind of stuff, that's something that I think is a little bit higher level than most players are ready to get to. Mm -hmm. And so when you're able to do that, it just opens up the whole world to you. I, I think a big thing of it, too, is like he's sticking in the air a lot uh, because, like, Pichu's, for example, they love like jumping up and throwing out Thunder Jolt. So like being in the air means you don't have to worry about what do I do with the Thunder Jolt because the Pichu's chasing it right afterwards, right? Like if you get hit by the Thunder Jolt, then you just get popped in the air as opposed to like getting carried into like a uh, a bread and butter hit confirm right. that uh, Pichu would want. And ZSS is kind of forced into the air. All of her poking tools, all of her great options to kind of zone around you in space are mostly air based. Mm -hmm. Other than like the side B, which is a commitment, uh, and forward tilt, which is kind of just a get off me button, everything's kind of in the air. Yeah. 
and that, uh, he's just jumping in place, making it so that Thunder Jolt doesn't seem very effective, and then winning the air-to-air -air against Pichu, because he's got tiny, stubby baby limbs. He's yep. not going to compete with technology that kills space pirates. <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right on that one. And this is very similar looking to the last game. Uh, last game, though, Dragneel was able to get that one stock. See if he can replicate that, or even maybe take three. And you see right there, the first time that Kuro is on the ground, ground having yeah. to block it, he gets blown up for it. And but that's that's why people are like, oh, Pikachu is one of the best, is the best character in the game, even. Oh, uh, P yeah, a lot it, of folks it, are saying there's just so yeah. much set play that Pikachu has off of Thunder Jolt, and Pikachu is very similar, just with a lot of other drawbacks. Mm -hmm. It's uh, as a few people point out, uh, Akuma Fireball esque. But there we go, back air picking up the jump at a shield, and Kuro winning with uh, nearly a JB3 stock. Just looking extremely decisive there. Yeah. Some amazing stuff. And Dragon People are going crazy off stage. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, over here. I don't know. I don't know. It's Ken versus the, someone. The, the thing that like caught my eye is Dragneel lost, right? Fist bump, took off the headset, and immediately ran over to, to see watch. the other set to yeah. like.